Hey everyone, Hui Shanya requested I share with you some of my tips and tricks for raising chow. Now I'm not a chow expert, so I don't know absolutely everything about them, nor will I be telling you anything that isn't easy to figure out on your own. But, just in case you're new to raising chow, or if there's just something I know that you haven't thought of, here you go. For reference, I'm just using Sonic Adventure 2 Battle. First of all, you'll need a newborn chow as an example. Just bought this funny little guy from the black market a while ago and hasn't done anything with him, so we'll use him. Of course, the first thing you do when you get a newborn chow is give it a name and check its grades. Hmm, unsurprisingly, this store bought chow's stats aren't that great. Average, sure, but to get the really good uber chow like Ciel here, you're going to need to do a lot of breeding. Even if you don't keep track of how many times you breed who with who, the more breeding you do, the stronger chow you'll get, most of the time. Chow tend to pass down their stats from generation to generation, so over time it won't be hard to get an all A chow like this. We haven't gotten an all S chow, but we have just casually been breeding and not really striving for one, so I'm assuming we'll get there eventually. Alright, now that I've given you a basic overview of breeding and how it matters, let's choose what we want to make savory. His lowest grade is swim, so if we make him a swim chow, it'll give him a bit of a boost so his stats don't suck as much. Whether you want to make your chow neutral, hero, or dark is up to you, but I personally hate dark swim chow, and Jizz already has a ton of hero swim, so let's make him neutral. The fastest way to max out a chow in all of its stats is to start from the second it's born. Now, little savory here is going to be a swim chow, so we'll max that out last. When you're aligning a chow towards the type you want, the stats have sliders. This means it can either be swim or fly, and it can either be run or power. So, if you want your chow to be a run chow, but it turns out to be a swim, you should have given it more fly drives to balance it out. Anyway, this bit's a little confusing, so we'll start working on the chow. To align it to be a swim chow, but still max out all of its stats, we'll start maxing out its run first and then its power. By the time both are maxed out, neither should have priority over the other, but unfortunately there's something I failed to take into account in recording the footage for this video. Using this method, you're more likely to get a power chow than a swim chow because different stats have different priorities. Swim takes priority over fly, and power takes priority over run. I don't quite understand it fully myself, but luckily there is an easy way to fix its alignment. After maxing out its fly, the final stat you'll max out in your chow's childhood, skeleton dog your chow and then give it 30 extra run drives. Its stat won't go up for the drives because it's already maxed out but this will balance out its alignment. Now give it 30 or so swim drives. We don't want to max out its swim yet because it gets a stat boost after it evolves into a swim chow, so we'll want to take full advantage of that after its evolution. Okay, so how exactly do we max out these stats? The fastest way is through animals, as they give way more experience than drives do, and there's a simple glitch to make it easier on you. Since we're starting with run, we'll go to Wild Canyon and pick up 10 cheetahs. Now, this glitch is easiest to do in the hero garden because of this pillar here. If you put the chow there, it won't be able to move. Unfortunately, if they start skipping around and wanting you to pet them, they'll be able to break free from the pillar's grasp. But since this chow is a newborn black market chow, we won't have that problem. Anyway, to do this glitch, pick up an animal and stand near the chow. Not too close to it. It's easy to tell if you're in the right place by the character's shadow. Now, put the animal down right in front of the chow, and it will use the animal without using it up. You can repeat this until the stat is maxed out. The good news is you only need 20 animals or drives of any type to align the chow towards that stat, so giving them more than 20 won't make it harder to change the alignment later. Stats don't decide what the chow turns into, the quantity of animals or drives you give it to. So, just repeat this step with the different animals to finish maxing out your chow. If your chow falls asleep during this process, it's better to just wait for it to wake up than try and force it. It'll just give you more trouble and waste more time than waiting for it would. The easiest way to max out power is to grab 10 gorillas from Iron Gate. Both the tigers and the bears are easier to get, but they give a little less power to time than gorillas do, so it's faster to use them in the long run, even if it takes longer to get them all. For fly, condors are the easiest. They give an insane amount of stats in multiple categories, so really they're the most useful animal there is. What's more, you can get them super quickly and two at a time from Wild Canyon. For swim, otters are your best bet, and while they're not as easy to get as seals, they give more stats. There are two of them fairly close to each other in Dry Lagoon, and if you want to gamble a bit more you can try Prison Lane, though half the time it's a sheep there. So, we're 
going to be using a few drives for swim and run, which we'll get from Iron Gate, hard mode. If you run out of lives while looking for animals, there's a handy glitch that can set your lives to 99. Just go to Security Hall on Mission 2, don't collect any rings, and stand here. Get hit by this robot, and it will knock you into the back ring. Repeat this once more, and then collect this extra life. Exit, and complete any other level to save. Now that our Chow stats are how we want them, it's time to fruit spam. When you give Chow fruit in his childhood, each entire fruit adds 9 minutes to your Chow's lifespan, and will save you 3.5 minutes towards its first evolution. Once your Chow evolves, fruit no longer add to the Chow's lifespan, but they do take 3.5 minutes off the time it will take for them to get their second evolution. Fruit in no circumstance make a Chow age faster or make their lifespan shorter. They're only good for your Chow. If you don't want to keep switching characters while trying to make a neutral chow, you can do a similar glitch to the animal glitch. Put the fruit down in front of the chow, and they'll start eating it without a heart appearing over their heads. This way, you can just use one character and still get a neutral chow, at least when it's time to fruit spam. So now our chow is reaching its first evolution. Voila! A neutral swim chow with maxed out stats and everything but swim. Now to align it for its second evolution. Since it's already a neutral chow, we don't have to worry about what character we use to raise it. Just likes neutral swim swim chow, so it'll max out its swim and it will be set for its second evolution. We would spam it some more and it'll be done. So we tend to let it get its second evolution more gradually as we work on other chow. Well, now little Savory has been fully raised, so have some fun with him. You can enter him in the chow races and get him a pretty jewel for his belly, or if you haven't already, unlock some new toys for your garden in the challenge races. And of course, hanging out with it in the garden and letting it age so it can reincarnate and the fun can start all over again. Well, that's about how Jisk and I raise our chow. If you already knew all this, good for you. If you learned something new, I'm glad I could help. Like I said, I'm no expert on this game, so if I got something wrong, it was an honest mistake and I'll happily correct it in an annotation. Next time, I'll cover breeding in more depth. Thank you for watching and happy chow raising!